Hello, hello. Welcome to Tea with the Druid. This is Philip Cargom, and Tea with the Druid is brought to you by the Order of Bards, Ovets, and Druids. And I'm seeing everybody arriving here from New Orleans and Derby and Sleepy Hertfordshire, New Hampshire, Bedfordshire, Norway, Oregon, Runcorn, uh, Bromley, Vermont, Amsterdam, New York, Chile, Ray, uh, rainy London and Yorkshire, Sunning Hill, Zurich, uh, Bristol, Frome, and uh, all over the place. Great to see you. Do keep coming in. And Brisbane and California, fantastic. Uh, yeah, so lovely to see you. I've just come back from um, a wonderful weekend in the West Country, in Glastonbury and Street, where we had our big uh, winter gathering of the order, uh, about 300 members from all kinds many different countries and parts of the world uh, meeting together and it was just fantastic and we had we we were in a new venue but it was warm and and it just had a great atmosphere and we had speakers we had um gordon the toll the toad our shamanic friend from scotland we had lucy jones who's uh written a wonderful book, Losing Eden, and has written a new book, Matrescence, all about the whole sort of initiation and process of becoming a mother, um, massive change that occurs in a, in a woman's life when she becomes a mom. Uh, and we had Graham Harvey, uh, who was, until recently, until he retired, the professor of religious studies at uh, the Open University, an old friend, pagan, druid, animist, and uh, it was great to hear their thoughts and to exchange with them. And then, of course, we had the wonderful Eisteddfod of music and poetry, poetry from Live Talk, who's going to cop out 28, as it's been called now, um, in um, to present poetry to awaken people's hearts and minds. And it's rather wonderful, I think, that even in that very, uh, what's the word, um, I don't know what, uh, official sort of world of, of a big conference like the, the COP meeting, uh, they recognize the importance of poetry to strike through to the heart of things and um, really inspire people. So that's, so uh, Liv shared some of uh, her wonderful poetry on environmental themes. So, so let's, let's, um, Let's just take a little time to settle. There's a way, there's a reason for Tea with a Druid being uh, being broadcast on a Monday. It's like our week is beginning and it, this gives us a time to ground ourselves for the week ahead, to really settle. And what better way to ground ourselves than to be imagining that we're seated around a fire, sitting out on in the forest in a, in a sacred grove, in a clearing in the woods. And you know, there's this extraordinary way in which uh, really what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the nervous system's inability to distinguish between physical reality and imaginative reality. And you might say, well, my nervous system can tell the difference between physical reality and when I'm imagining something. But if I invite you now, that you've got a lemon, a nice juicy lemon in front of you and you cut it and then cut a slice and then put it in your mouth now. Imagine you're doing that and, and the lemon juice is going onto your tongue, flowing down. Now, probably what's happening when that happens is when you imagine that is you start, saliva starts to um, flow in your mouth. Uh, and uh, so that's that's the whole premise of working with, when it's not the whole premise, it's one one reason for working with the imagination and one value it can have for us is that when, and particularly if we're able to drop down into a meditative state or more open state, we can actually influence our bodies. So that if we can create a little time of calm at the beginning of every week, this is going to actually help us on a cellular level to to uh, to in, in, in develop our health, make us feel calmer, and more at ease in the world. And we need that, I think, as so, so much difficulty is occurring around us. And 
so let's let's just let's just drop into that sense of being seated around the fire together warming our hands and just dropping down and then just notice where your awareness naturally settles in your body and how you're feeling how would you describe your feeling and then just come out and share that it's really good to see get a <laughs> damn lemon i'm still puckering says somebody um so 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 um just yeah just say how you're feeling so 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 um some liz is in her shoulders and she's satisfied feeling satisfied various feelings of processing and then satisfaction openness to the beautiful whoops tired with a stress headache tense full really happy nervous relaxed agitated tired cold under the weather today hopeful begrumbled i like that begrumbled uneasy anxious and fearful sleepy i just woke up relaxed happy and enjoying my feet on the ground stressed and sad ray gaza yes peaceful calming down tired and happy heart peaceful basking in the sun inexplicably upset after a wonderful weekend tired but happy having been feeling shaken up but arriving here brings a sense of a little calm powerful and attentive a bit exhausted having been ill for five weeks content becoming grounded Ah, too much instant negative news, but I'm trying to settle into positive feelings. Relaxed, comfortable and relaxed. Peaceful, enjoying the warmth. Blake is adding begrumbled to his vocabulary, slowing down for the winter. Tense, quite up in my head, nurtured. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> so <clears throat> thank you for for sharing that <clears throat> um i want to i want to tell you about um a book that this 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 most of the books that i do um take years of development and and this this latest book that's just been published uh is no exception and and i wanted to just talk a little bit about it to you it's it started i suppose about eight years ago uh when i when i had a bout of insomnia and stephanie uh had been having insomnia and i hadn't really you only really appreciate i think tough things when you experience them yourself so so i i then went through a period of insomnia and i went wow this is really is tough this is really very unpleasant and i decided to explore it and because i'm a psychologist and psychotherapist i explored it from the kind of psychological angle dived into the research did some training in various modalities including cbti which is training um cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia and so on and um began a sleep clinic an online sleep clinic and we beta tested lots of people we i sort of launched it through tea with a druid about i don't know six six seven years ago <clears throat> and invited some participants to beta test the course and that was really fun working with about a couple of dozen uh tea with the druid participants who tested out the various techniques that i was suggesting and so on i gradually built an online program and it's 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 available it's on my website if you go to courses you'll see uh, the sleep clinic there so it's an online program that takes you through uh, a series of uh exercises and suggestions for sleeping better so that's how it, it began and then and then and then um and then that gradually worked itself into a book but the interesting thing about when you work on a book that i've discovered is that every so often you'll get an insight a little shift in perspective or a little you know people talk about downloads a little little uh insight uh ask some arwen and um and and you can kind of take a leap forward and and your what you're trying to express really uh develops and grows 
And um, the insight for me that occurred was when I was starting to work in psychedelic therapy through the Synthesis Institute and the ASA program a few about three years ago. And I realized that what we were doing with clients was helping them move from uh, started off with clients suffering from depression and then moving into people who wanted to um, uh, open themselves more to their creativity and achieve sort of greater wholeness. You would you would really be about the business of helping people move from a very from an everyday state of consciousness to a very extraordinary and unusual state of consciousness and then back again safely and effectively. And I realized that that's what we're doing when we go to sleep. We're essentially moving from a very ordinary state, well, not very ordinary, and the, the normal state of waking consciousness to uh, a very unusual state of consciousness where we're having dreams, we're exploring other realms, we might be having lucid dreams, all sorts of things are happening. Our body cells are being regenerated, our brains are being flushed with cerebrospinal fluid, this extraordinary processes that occur, you know, when the actual space between, between the neurons, when you're in deep sleep, enlarges to allow the CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid, to flush through, to take away this plaque, this beta amyloid plaque, that uh, is the cause of um, Alzheimer's, or one of the causes of Alzheimer's disease. And just this year, they've discovered a um, a, uh, a drug that can help to remove this plaque. So there's a major step forward in the treatment of Alzheimer's. But this is a process that's naturally occur occurring dur during deep sleep. So we go from this very extraordinary, uh, very ordinary place to very extraordinary place and back again. And insomnia or problems with sleep are quite simply difficulties in going into that altered state and back again. And that insight enabled me to put the sort of finishing touches to this program that I had developed through the sleep clinic over the years. And so I've expressed it all in a book, which is called uh, The Gift of the Night. And and I've laid it out in, in six steps that are, um, that are easy to follow and that include what I believe is the best in the science-based understanding of sleep and how to sleep well but it includes as well insights from the spiritual and alternative worlds so it's what's called an integrative approach it's integrating scientific approach with uh, an alternative approach and let's let's drop into a meditation exercise now for me to demonstrate this to you uh, in those six steps when you get to step five the first um, the first four steps are basically getting you set up for the adventure of sleep, the gift of the night. That's what I've called the book, the gift of the night, to really benefit from the gift of the night and to not only fix <clears throat> any difficulties in sleeping you might be having, but also to incorporate the whole process of sleep into your spiritual practice. So it introduces the idea of sleep as spiritual practice. You know, how wonderful that every 24 hours, we've got around eight hours, seven, eight, nine hours, which is me time, is personal retreat time, which can become uh, our part of our spiritual practice. So um, rather than me, I could talk forever about this. So this tea could go on for hours. And in fact, I do talk for seven and three quarter hours in the audio version of the book which which is which is launched tomorrow and that was great fun i really enjoyed making that recording with um the wonderful david bramwell uh who many of you will know from his podcast or and the obod podcast um uh, adventures in utopia but uh, but tomorrow this this audiobook launches so you've got this, you you can hear me talking about this for seven and three quarter hours but let me let me start off by reading you a poem and then suggesting we do an exercise which is like a a meditation so even if even if sleep isn't the problem for you you i hope you'll enjoy it so the book begins with a little bit of poetry since since uh we're we're interested in the bardic tradition here Long ago I learned how to sleep, 
in an old apple orchard where the wind swept by, counting its money and throwing it away. In a wind gaunt orchard where the limbs forked out and listened or never listened at all. In a parcel of trees where the branches trapped the wind into whistling, who, who are you? I slept with my head in an elbow on a summer afternoon, and there I took a sleep lesson. And that's from Wind Song by Carl Sandburg. And the fact that I start this book with that poem is really a testament to, to Obod and to our membership, to, to everyone, because that was a poem that a member sent me, the wonderful astrologer, Sarah Furo, who some of you may know, and she, when she knew I was interested in sleep, she sent me that poem. And I thought, what a wonderful poem to start, um, to start the book. So uh, let me now introduce this, this, this meditation to you. When you get to step five in this program, I present 13 ways to get to sleep because the first four steps get you ready to go to sleep, if you like. All sorts of stuff about diet and supplements and light and, you know, all the usual stuff that you've probably come across in other books and YouTube clips and all the rest of it. But I've brought them all together and put them in these five steps. So you're really set up and then you're lying in bed. Well, if you don't drop into sleep straight away, you know, quite soon, what are you going to do? Well, I present 13 ways that, and that, that includes yoga nidra and hypnotherapy and progressive muscle relaxation and so on. And I give some scripts for those. And in the audio version, I read them out in a very soporific kind of way. So, so, but, but there's one exercise out of those 13 that you can do that is not designed to send you to sleep. So you don't have to worry that this is going to knock you out and, and um, I'm going to send you to sleep. So, so what it is, is based on sophrology. It's very simple. And it's based on the understanding of our nervous system's plasticity. It's called neuroplasticity. And that's how basically your nervous system creates neural pathways. And these pathways are real pathways in the uh, 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 in the in the in the nervous system, are uh, physical connections of neurons that create these pathways, and you can create new ones. Very exciting uh, discoveries that have been made uh, in neuroscience in this way, and it works with a concept in psychology called uh, rehearsal, which is that if you want something to go successfully, if you visualize it as happening successfully in your mind, then it's more likely to to happen it when you actually act it out. So, so let's have a different, uh, different kind of meditation today, working with that. And whether you sleep well or badly, uh, hopefully you will enjoy this. And the invitation is to become aware just of sitting here now. And uh, I'm going to invite you just to gently close your eyes or lower your gaze to better concentrate on yourself. And then to take a slow, deep breath in. Hold it for a few seconds and then breathe out fully and deeply. And as you breathe out, just try to empty all of your lungs. And then as you breathe in, now, gradually tense up as many muscles as you can and hold your breath just for as long as you can, not, not too long so it's uncomfortable, but just hold your breath at the top and try to squeeze every muscle, thighs, legs, shins, toes, scrunch everything up, scrunch, 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 scrunch. make a funny face because nobody can see you, scrunch, 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 scrunch. And then when you can't hold your breath any longer, <sighs> breathe out, relaxing all your muscles release, relax, let go, Ooh, eyes still closed, <sighs> just let your breathing return to normal, and then we're going to do it a second time, and now you know the routine, so you just empty your lungs on the out breath, <sighs> and then take in a nice deep breath, and as you breathe, 
in, start to tense your muscles, and then when your lungs are full, hold your lung, hold the air in, tense, 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 tense. Release, relax, let go. Let your breathing return to normal and just allow yourself to settle for a few moments. And then we'll do it a third time. Just empty your lungs. Breathe in fully and deeply. When your lungs are full, you're tensing all your muscles. Tense, 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 tense. Grimace with the face. Scrunch every, all the muscles up. Tense, 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 tense. Release, relax, let go as you breathe out. Now let your breathing settle back to normal. And just imagine the rest of the the remainder of the day unfolding. And you're going to just traveling into the future now. You're seeing the evening unfolding. Tea with a druid finishes. And then you get to the time when you want to go to bed. So you're doing your go to bed routine and you're putting the cat out. Whatever you do, you're locking the house up. You're getting, brushing your teeth doing that routine that you do. Going into the bedroom, getting undressed, getting into bed, turning out the light, nice and cozy, settling in, just enjoying the feeling of being in the bed and just no, your eyes are closing and you're going, you're dropping into the most delicious sleep. And you're just imagining this sleep. You might be looking at yourself like you're in a movie watching yourself in bed, or you might be fully identified with yourself in the bed. And you just see yourself going through the night, sleeping every so often. You just turn one way or the other. But as you lie there, you're just getting the deepest sleep imaginable your body cells are repairing themselves this completely natural process of regeneration and rest that's occurring and it's feeling deeply satisfying at every level of the soul of the body this restorative process of sleep and the light's coming into the bedroom now starting to be morning time and you're just slowly waking up having that lovely feeling of a bright fresh day ahead of you you breathe in and you imagine yourself sitting up on the edge of the bed now and as you sit up on the edge of the bed feeling fully awake and fully conscious you gradually allow the scene of being in the bedroom to fade as you become aware with your eyes still closed of being seated <clears throat> here and now, <clears throat> fully present. And as you breathe in and out to finish the exercise, you finish with an affirmation. With every breath I take, I feel a deep sense of confidence and trust in myself. I feel my mind and body, my heart and soul, completely harmonized. With each breath, I'm creating a positive future for myself, filled with happiness and well being. Taking a breath gradually become more and more aware of your physical body in the here and now. And when you feel ready, you open your eyes. And so, <clears throat> so it's very short. We did that very briefly. 
say it took i don't know eight minutes something like that 10 minutes um and and uh you can imagine if you that that you can do this exercise in a slightly more complex sort of way which i go through in the program and and this is basically programming your nervous system so it forms one of the exercises in the in the sleep clinic and and in the book and um it's it helps you to get to sleep eventually and i'm just looking at um uh, the comments B people are, are, are dropping in their various sort of tips themselves i found burning a combination of frankincense and myrrh in bed helps me and um listening to asmr videos uh, uh can can be really helpful and so on and so yes that's exactly so what i do in the book is i mention all these techniques working with sound and you know there are people know about white noise but you might not know about pink noise and gray noise and uh so on and um so 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 um so i put all these tips together and then in the second half of the book i've i've, I've created a section called um almost everything you've ever wanted to know about sleep where i deal deal with various sleep issues that uh, uh people suffer from um including you know sleepwalking sleep talking um exploding head syndrome uh all these different things which it is is fascinating even if you don't suffer from them yourself it's really interesting to read it's a fascinating topic the whole area because it's really what we're dealing with is about consciousness and how it manifests in the incarnated being if you like from a spiritual uh perspective and then i finish with lucid dreaming this extraordinary experience that we can have and that we can cultivate and uh, next week, I'll be interviewing some friends who uh, have created a wonderful card deck called Lucid Dreaming, Lucid Living. Uh, and so uh, you'll be hearing uh, a discussion about Lucid Dreaming next week. But if you, if you, uh, about a third of the adult population suffers from sleep difficulties, and that's starting to stretch down into younger people as well younger and younger people are, are starting to experience sleep difficulties and um uh, so so even if you don't have sleep difficulties it's very likely you know somebody who who does so anyway there you are there's my there's my book plug uh it's called uh the gift of the night uh six step, step program for better sleep and um it's uh it's i I'll, i think i give you the link in the show notes but i'll I'll give you uh, the link again. And as I said, the audio book um, tonight, it, the, the audio sample is, is a voice saying you can't hear an audio sample till tomorrow, but tomorrow you'll be able to hear an audio sample on it. Um, so I do hope you enjoy that. And have uh, a wonderful sleep tonight, I hope. And um, I'm really looking forward to reading your comments when I made myself a cup of tea. And uh, you have a lovely week. Many, many blessings. Much love. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay. Bye.